Today, I'm going to be showing you my addressable fire alarm system. Let's get started. I have lots of vintage fire alarms up today, so let's check them out. This right here is an Edwards Pre-Integrity, and it looks like a speaker strobe, but it's actually a horn strobe. And it is set on code 3, so you'll get to hear all of the wonderful loud noises that it makes today. <laughs> Moving on down the line, we won't be testing this blue Gentex alarm today, but we will get to see this vintage simplex horn. It is, as you can see on the side, I'm trying to zoom in on the model here, a 2901-9806, and it's an electronic horn. These older horns take filtered DC power, and this panel right here puts out unfiltered DC power. So it's not gonna sound too healthy today at all. So we're not actually gonna be testing it for that long today just because of that. And you'll hear it, it's gonna sound really gunky. But um, this will be set on California code. So it'll go off continuously for a little bit and then it'll stop. And then hopefully you'll be able to hear the pre-integrity when it stops. Because this is a very loud horn. Going down today, we have our usual addressable pull stations. And then for a conventional pull station, we have an Edwards Local Alarm 270 SPO. As you can see, it has the older Edwards logo and then going up it says local alarm which back then it usually meant this is not going to call the fire department it's just going to sound the local alarm and that's how you can tell if a pull station is older if it says local alarm but today you know I see local alarms on monitored systems and all that so it's kind of an older term but local alarm just meant it was going to sound the local alarm and it was on someone else to call the fire department whoever hears the alarm so we'll pull that today and let you see that I've not used the plain old fire drill button inside the fire alarm control panel in a while, so we're going to be doing that today. All you have to do is locate the button and then hold it for two seconds, and that starts a fire drill, which basically just sets off the alarms. Here we go, this will be loud. So yeah, as you can see, that is plenty loud, and it does not sound good at all. <laughs> so we're not going to be setting that off for too long. And we can re-alarm the panel with the local alarm 270SPO. So all you have to do is pull in case of fire, which we're going to simulate there's a fire and just pull it. Here we go. In three, two, one. And as you can see on the panel, it now says fire alarm instead of just trouble. Let's go ahead and reset the pull station. The inside of these older models looks a little different, so let me show you. As you can see, the switch is a little different. Someone added in this tape because this once was installed on a rail system. So this was probably just used to, for a fire drill or something like that. Or someone got confused often and they just put in the tape. And as you can see, it says to replace glass, lift and insert glass rod through the front. So you would just lift this, which kind of opens the side, as you can see. And you would normally have a glass rod right in there. Or you don't have to have one, but I don't have one today. So as you can see, the pull station is now reset. And all I have to do is reset the fire alarm control panel. And that'll be it for the system test today. We'll just do a quick one today just because of the FWR. I don't want to ruin this horn or the panel. So thank you for watching this video. Rate, comment, and subscribe. And thank you for tuning in and viewing, everyone. I do have some of these Edwards pull stations on my site, scrsafety.com. So if you want one, they're not too expensive and shipping is free. So go check out scrsafety.com. Thanks for watching, rate, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day.